All right, here's example one with integration by parts. So in the last video, we talked about where this formula comes from. Uh, now we're gonna talk about how to use it and we're gonna do that uh, through an example here. So basically, uh, the integration by parts formula just says integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. So uh, if we wanna use the integration by parts formula, we just have to think of this integral here as the integral of u dv. So basically, we have to choose u to be something in here, okay? So it's not like substitution, where you know in substitution you choose u to be something, you're looking for a function as derivative. Uh, this is a little bit different from substitution, but you're still gonna look at this integral here and see, okay, um, what should u be so that I could use this integration by parts formula? So basically, uh, choose u. And then once you choose u, uh, dv is automatically everything else in the integral. Then dv is everything else. Um, including the dx. Okay, so be very careful with the differential notation here. Um, you got to have the dv's and the dx's and the du's and the dx's together and all that stuff. Okay. So choose u, then dv is everything else in the integral, uh, including the dx. Okay. Now, yeah, you might have a constant multiple that you can take out and uh, not include in the formula if you want, but it might sometimes it's easier to just toss the constant multiple in there. Uh, but anyway. Just some subtle details there. So choose u, then dv is everything else, including the dx. So um, how do we choose u? That's usually the tricky part. Um, how do we choose u? So some people say, okay, choose u to be the thing that's uh, most easily differentiable. Okay, well, what do we have? We have x and e to the x. Well, they're both pretty easy to differentiate, right? Um, if you take the derivative of x, you get 1. Take the derivative of e to the x, you get e to the x. Okay, so some people say choose u to be... Uh, the thing that's most easily differentiable, or some people say choose u to be the thing that has the simplest derivative. So x has the simplest derivative, right, because its derivative is just 1, but the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, which is a bit more, uh, well, it's less simple than 1 anyway. Um, some people say, well, don't choose u, choose dv to be the thing that's uh, most easily integrated, okay? Well, um, if you integrate x, you get 1 half x squared plus c. If you integrate e to the x, you just get e to the x, right, plus c. Um, so maybe e to the x is a little more easily integrated. But still, um, th those ways of thinking about it, they're really kind of uh, vague, and they're a little bit subjective. You know, what's easy to one person might not be uh, as easy to another, and so on. So uh, it is kind of, it's just, it's too subjective like that. So there is this little mnemonic device here uh, that people like to use. So let's come over here and say, okay, how do we choose u? how to choose u. So there's uh, this little acronym here, uh, LIATE. I, I don't know how to pronounce that, I don't know if it's... So um, L-I-A-T-E, so that's... Uh, how do we choose u? Just remember this. LIATE, li 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 I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know, man. Okay, so, <clears throat> so what's the L stand for? So the L stands for uh, logarithmic functions. Okay, logarithmic functions. I stands for inverse trig functions. Um, A stands for algebraic functions. T stands for trig functions. And E stands for exponential functions. Okay, so when you choose U, what you do is you go down this list and choose U to be the first thing, the first type of function that appears in the integral. Okay, so what do we have in our integral here? X E to the X. Okay, well, what kind of, well, okay, before that, um, logarithmic function, this stuff like natural log of X. Um, base 2, base 3 log of x, things like that. So just logs, okay, pretty much just logs. Inverse trig, that's things like uh, inverse sine, you know, like the arc sine of x, the arc tangent, arc secant, arc cosecant, arc cotangent, things like that. Um, algebraic functions, that's stuff like polynomials, rational functions, uh, square roots, things like that. So stuff like uh, the square root of x, um, x to the 2 thirds, x to the 14th, um, x minus 1 over x plus 2, 
So algebraic functions just means like polynomials, rational functions, things with square roots, uh, fractional powers, things like that. Um, that's what algebraic means. Uh, trig functions, sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent, and uh, exponential functions, things like uh, e to the x, uh, 5 to the x, 1.7 to the x, things like that. Okay. So what you want to do is uh, look at your integral. Okay, look at the thing you want to integrate here. Go down the list of these functions and then choose u to be the first type of function that appears here. Okay. So always start with logarithmic functions. Do we have any log functions? No. Just x and e to the x. Do we have any inverse trig functions? No. Do we have any algebraic functions? Yes. Uh, x is an algebraic function. Okay. So this rule tells us to choose u to be the algebraic function. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're going to choose u to be x. Okay, so let uh, u use a different color here. Let u be x. Okay, now once you choose u, okay, so here's our u right here. Okay, this right here is our u. Now since we've chosen the u, uh, dv is automatically fixed to be everything else. So everything that's left over is dv. Well, what's left over? e to the x dx. Okay, so that's dv. So once we have u equals x, then dv is automatically e to the x dx. Okay, because once you choose, remember, once you choose u, it was written right here, we just erased it. Once you choose u, uh, dv is automatically everything else, including the dx. So u is x, dv is everything else, including the dx. So that's e to the x dx. Now, since we have u, we can get du. Okay, so we need u, dv, uh, v, and du, right? So here's u, here's dv. Now du, uh, if u is x, then du is uh, just dx, right? So remember, du is going to be u prime of x dx. Well, if u is x, what's u prime of x? Just 1, right? Just 1 uh, dx. So since we're just multiplying by 1, we don't have to write anything. Uh, we can just say dx. Okay, so du is dx. Hey, and you've got to have this dx here because you're talking about differentials. So it's really not correct uh, to say du equals 1. Okay, you really got to have it say uh, 1 dx or just dx, because okay, it's differentials here. So be very careful with that notation. Um, and if dv is e to the x dx, how do we get v? Well, we just integrate, right? So if we integrate e to the x dx, <clears throat> what do we get? Well, integrate e to the x dx, you just get e to the x, right? And technically there's a plus c, but when we do integration by parts, um, we don't put the arbitrary constant here. So if dv is e to the x dx, then v is just e to the x. Okay, so we don't put the arbitrary constant here. Um, and if you're wondering why not, uh, the short answer is it doesn't matter. It's going to cancel out anyway. And if you want a longer explanation, uh, we'll talk about that in the next video. So we'll go through the details of that in the next video. But for now, just know that when you do integration by parts, um, when you get v from dv, don't include the arbitrary constant. Because okay? it, it just it'll cancel out anyway. So we can just safely assume that the constant is 0 or we could just totally forget about it, really, for integration by parts. Okay. okay, so now that we have all these, let's go ahead and stick them into the formula. So the integral uh, now the integral of x e to the x dx. Okay, so that's uh, the integral of u dv. So that's uh, from the integration by parts formula, it's uv minus the integral of v du. Okay, so this is uh, u v. Okay, here's u, here's v minus the integral of v du. Okay. So again, uh, this here, this is u. Okay. This is uh, dv. Okay. Here's u, here's dv. This is u. This is v. This is the integral of v. And then this is du. Okay. So u, uh, sorry, the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Okay. So all we did was we just took these and plugged them into this formula up here. Okay. Now notice, um, so what's going on here? So this is uh, x e to the x minus, now we've reduced this integral to x e to the x minus this integral, and that's great because this integral we can just do straight up right away, right? If we integrate e to the x, then we get e to the x plus c. Okay. Now here we do want to have the arbitrary constant because we're not uh, choosing, or we're not getting v from dv. So the only time you want to ignore the arbitrary constant with integration by parts uh, is if you have integrals left over, which we'll talk about later, or if you um, are getting v from dv. 
So again, if you get v from dv, forget about the arbitrary constant. But here, we're continuing with the rest of the problem now, so we have to have the arbitrary constant here. So actually, this is it, right? This is our answer. There's nothing left to do. Um, so what we just found out was that the integral of x e to the x dx uh, equals x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. And if you're not sure about that, um, how do you check your answer for integrals? Uh, you take a derivative of your answer. Okay, so if you integrate this and get this, you can take a derivative of this to see if you actually get x e to the x dx, um, or just x e to the x. So let's go through that. Uh, we won't do that with all the examples, but just for this example, just to be thorough, uh, let's do that. So x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. So if we take a derivative, what happens? Well, product rule here, right? So that's a derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, okay? Now, when we uh, do derivative of minus e to the x, that's just minus e to the x. Derivative of a constant is zero. Okay, so take a derivative, product rule gives you this. And then minus e to the x, take a derivative, you get minus e to the x. The derivative of a constant is zero. Okay? So what's this? Uh, this is e to the x, blah, 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 minus e to the x. So these guys cancel. Zero is just zero. And then what's left over? x e to the x. Okay? So this actually does verify that if we take a derivative of this, then we get x e to the x. So that tells us that this answer is correct. Okay? So that's uh, integration by parts example one with an explanation of how to use it. So again, just remember this. Uh, if you want to know more details about this, where it comes from, check the video description. Uh, there's a link to an article in a math journal from, uh, I think, 1983. Um, so you can check that out. You could read it for free. Uh, you have to register for a JSTOR account, um, but it is free. It's all totally free. Um, so anyway, check that link there if you want to know more details. So this is what we use to do integration by parts here. And we'll use this in the upcoming examples also. Okay, so in the next video, we'll talk about why we don't need the arbitrary constant here, and then more examples after that.